you, you know the trouble when, when people <coughs> ask you a question like that for a piece of music you haven't played for 25 years? It's trying to remember what the hell it was. <laughs> and the secret to that is the bass drum has to play what the cowbell plays. But you have to know what the cowbell's doing first, and I sort of forgot it. <laughs> anyway, what I'm trying to say is that all those little things that people like, they all come from rudiments. They all come from these little exercises we, we sit at home with a practice pad going crazy to. But you can, you can find the accents in them which make all the difference. I mean, the, the paradiddle I showed you a minute ago, it's, it's used in nearly every disco record that ever came out in the 70s and 80s. And they just changed the accent. You put an accent on the offbeat and you have a rhythm instead of just the actual, which means nothing. In the same way, you can take a double paradiddle, which is, And you can put that on a drum kit and you get... I'll show you what I did in about 1968 with that. And the other point about these things is good things don't need to be difficult. They can be so simple that you just think, well, why didn't I think of that? That is such a great rhythm. And the great thing with those simple uh, paradiddle, double, triple paradiddles, they all go into 4-4, four, four, so you can play them in popular music. You've just got to think of them in a different way. That's the fun of it, making something different happen with old things, because there are no new things. Everything's old. To find new ways to do the old things. That's the fun of that. Thanks for the question. Yeah. <laughs> Please, somebody else. Burn. Well, burn is okay. It's very hard to play burn by myself, but I'll, I'll play a piece using the same idea. Again, it's just single strokes, double strokes, and paradiddles. Um, so uh, you'll have to you'll have to pretend that you're all playing the, the tune, okay? And, uh, and I'll start doing the fills. I'll show you what I mean. I'll tell you the story about the whole thing with Burn. <laughs> we were this crazy falling down castle on the border between England and Wales. <clears throat> and the, the rest of the guys were working Burn out, writing it. <clears throat> and they just kept going over this one part, time and time again. And about 20 minutes later, I'm really getting bored. Come on, I don't do it again. So as I was so bored, I started to play a drum solo over the, them playing the song. And they all stopped and went, that's great. Do it again. <laughs> and that's how we came to the verses with all the, the crazy drum fills in there. Because they couldn't think of how to finish what they were trying to do and that made it work. <laughs> so. And the, we did about three takes of that. And the other two were absolute chaos. I mean, <laughs> nothing worked. Every fill was all over the place. And that one take, everything sort of worked okay. No, one take and he goes, okay. He's looking down and goes, you can have this five minutes, it's okay. Yeah. Sorry? Pictures of home. Oh, that's, yeah. Now, again, pictures of home isn't a difficult part. What it is, it's exactly right for the song. But it also, it misdirects you, which is, well, drummers like to do that. They like to give you the impression of one time when it's another time. 
and pictures of home is one, two, three, four. The intro is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So when the, when the song comes in, I put you in another place. So it's a little bit of a surprise, but the intro just works like this. And uh, when we did the record, uh, we played the whole thing in its entire. I didn't like the first fill I did on the take. <coughs> so the one that's on the record is the one I did again, and we, we cut it, we spliced it on. After uh, 30 years when we were doing the, the remastering, I listened to the first one, and there was nothing wrong with it. But when we started playing it again on stage, the rest of the guys couldn't, couldn't find the one because it's a... It leads them somewhere else. So that's why I have to put the last four <coughs> so that the guitarists don't get lost. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> I thought your drummers would like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, we, we get drummer jokes. We can get our own back on them. It's okay. Fireball, yeah. Okay, everybody, everybody knows the story behind the fireball thing, don't they? Okay. Well, we had this idea for the song, and I sort of knew the impression I wanted to get, and I tried it with one foot. And I could just about get the speed. There was no, no power, no aggression in it. And the night before, in the same studio, The Who had been recording, and Keith's kit was still in the corner. The roadies hadn't taken it away. So I just dragged one of his bass drums up and put it next to mine, next to the hi-hat. And what I would have been doing with the hi-hat, I just did on the other bass drum. And that's the only time I've really used two bass drums as a song. And then this, again, it's not difficult, but what it is, it's great for the song. And that makes it, it's more than the drum part, then it's a piece of music. Which is, you know, people would disagree, but drummers are musicians. <laughs> That should have been another bass drum, but we didn't have one. <laughs> You're not meant to know that one yet. <laughs> Please. Certainly. You ask first, you get the, you get the sticks, you see. Shall I um, maybe bring the snare drum out and do something here with the snare drum? Because that's always fun, you know, because it's nice to have lots and lots of drums and cymbals and things. But the heart of a drum kit is a snare drum. If you take the snare drum away, you're in big trouble. You take the rest of it away, you can still play along with the band. So we'll bring a snare drum out and we'll do some things here. Breaking the place up here. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> That's a very awkward question to answer because, you know, we always remember the good times. And it doesn't matter whether you're making music or your social life or your 
business. You remember the good times. The bad times go away. And I can look back and I just remember the great times with every lineup we ever had in the band. And it's very, very hard for me to think of the crap 20 years ago. I can remember some of the crap 10 years ago, but 30 years ago, I can't remember. It, it disappears. The good things, the magic stay with you forever. But the bad things disappear, and so you just let it go. And I just have great memories of all those times. So each lineup was great fun. And I, and I want to forget the times when it wasn't good. Okay. So.